Welcome to part C, the final part of lecture one. This presentation is a lesson on operator basis transformations and matrix diagonalization. My name is Dr. Jacob Hudis. My aim is to present the core ideas of quantum mechanics clearly using necessary math to understand the big picture. I believe the current teaching methodology for quantum mechanics needs a tune-up. Hi, and here's an outline of the talk. First, I'll discuss how to represent the same vector in multiple coordinate systems. I'll move on to discuss how to represent the same operator in multiple coordinate systems. This is what is known as a similarity transformation. I'll do a detailed example of a similarity transformation. Then I'll move on to discussing diagonalization in quantum mechanics. Matrix diagonalization is a type of similarity transformation. There will be a step-by-step -step guide to matrix diagonalization. Again, I'll give a detailed example and another detailed example. I'll begin by discussing how to represent the same vector in multiple coordinate systems. There are two coordinate systems in this picture. There's the unprimed system. This is the x-axis, the z-axis, and y comes out of the page. And then there's a prime coordinate system, which is rotated negative 45 degrees about the y-axis. This is the vector A. It's represented by its x, y, and z components. A points straight up in space regardless of the orientation of the coordinate system. In the unprime coordinate system, A has 0x, 0y, and a magnitude of 1 in the z direction. It's the same vector A. It still points upward, but in the prime coordinate system, it is some amount in the x prime direction and some amount in the z prime direction. In the prime coordinate system, the vector A is represented as 1 over root 2, 0, 1 over root 2. When you multiply the vector by some rotation matrix, that expresses the vector in a new coordinate system. It's the same vector, it's just expressed in a different rotated coordinate system. A brief discussion on active versus passive transformation. In the picture on the left, there is a vector A with a magnitude of 1 pointing straight up in the z direction. If I rotate by some angle theta, I produce a new vector B with different components along the x, y, and z axis. On the right is a picture of the same vector A, although the scale is different. This time, we rotate the coordinate system instead of the vector itself. The vector components in the rotated coordinate system are the same as the values of the rotated vector components in the original unprimed system. Now I move on to discuss operator change of basis. This is known as a similarity transformation. Here is an equation where matrix M multiplies a vector A and stretches it by a factor of 3. In the unprimed coordinate system, A is represented like this, and M is represented like this. Now if I rotate the coordinate system, I need to express A differently. It's not just the vector A that needs to be expressed differently. The matrix M also needs to be written in the new coordinate system. Here I present vector A and matrix M in the rotated coordinate system without yet showing how they were derived. The explanation will come shortly. Now I move on to a detailed example, transforming a diagonal matrix to a non-diagonal form. The goal of this example is to teach you how to transform a matrix operator from one basis to another. This is called a similarity transformation or conjugation. In this example, I will take the matrix M, which is diagonal in the X, Y, Z basis, and transform it into the X prime, Y prime, Z prime basis, rotated by 30 degrees about the Y axis. In the prime rotated coordinate system, the matrix M will no longer be diagonal. In this example, there's a vector A, represented by this black arrow. The matrix M onto A produces a new vector C. This yellow arrow is the vector C. The matrix M is an operator in R3, and it stretches vector A by a factor of 3. This matrix is the operator that transforms the coordinates from one basis to another. I want to represent the entire problem in the rotated coordinate system. This means I want to represent the vectors, also known as rank 1 tensors, and matrices, also known as rank 2 tensors, in the new coordinate basis. I can use the transformation matrix to represent vector A and C in the prime coordinate system. Here's vector A in the unprime coordinate system. Vector A in the prime coordinate system is negative 0 0.50, 0 0.866. Vector C in the prime coordinate system is vector A multiplied by 3. I know that M in the prime coordinate system operating on A in the prime coordinate system has to produce C, again, in the prime coordinate system. I know A and C. The objective is to find M in the prime coordinate system. That is the similarity transformation. That's finding your operator in a new rotated coordinate system. So now how do we get the matrix M in the rotated coordinate system? Start out with our original equation, M onto A equals 3 onto A. I'm going to define an operator S as a general rotation matrix. I can then multiply S on the left of both sides of this equation. So I have SM onto A equals 3S onto A. 
I know that SS inverse is the identity matrix, so I can insert the identity matrix anywhere I want to, and I'm going to insert the identity matrix in this location. Therefore, SM, S inverse S, this is just the identity matrix onto A equals 3S onto A. We know S onto A is A in the rotated coordinate system, and therefore SM, S inverse is the matrix M expressed in the rotated coordinate system. This formula is the similarity transformation. For our example, we did a rotation about y by negative 30 degrees. That was the s, the transformation matrix. And then s inverse would be ry of positive 30. This is the matrix represented in the prime coordinate system. On this slide, I'll recap the vector and matrix formulas for transformations in rotated coordinate systems. Rotation matrices express the vector in a different coordinate system. Just as a vector can be expressed in a different coordinate system, a matrix, aka rank 2 tensor, can also be transformed. A tensor follows specific transformation rules under coordinate changes, ensuring physical quantities like lengths and angles remain invariant. This is the transformation known as a similarity transformation. This is how you transform a rank 2 tensor or a matrix operator between coordinate systems. Now I move on to matrix diagonalization. What is it and why is it important? Are you in need of a great physics tutor? Dr. Hudis can help. Whether you're preparing for a high school test, AP test, or college exam, let me help you ace it. Are you an eager high school student aiming to get ahead and prepare for college level physics? Or maybe you're a college student and you want to learn even more advanced physics. Dr. Hudis can help. Visit acephysics.org and schedule a lesson today. Matrix diagonalization is a process that transforms a matrix into its diagonal form. Diagonalization aligns the matrix with a new coordinate system whose axes are defined by the matrix's eigenvectors. This is the key point. Diagonalization is finding the basis transformation that makes a non non-diagonal matrix diagonal. There's one other thing I want to discuss. Matrices representing non-commuting observables, such as position and momentum, cannot be simultaneously diagonalized. The laws of physics dictate that you can't know both position and momentum with arbitrary accuracy. This is why those observables can't be simultaneously diagonalized. The eigenvectors of their respective matrices are not aligned along the same axis. Now that you understand what diagonalization is, Let's go over the procedure to diagonalize a matrix. Matrix diagonalization involves changing to a basis where the matrix is diagonal. This procedure helps you find that transformation. So here's a step-by-step -step guide to diagonalization. One, determine the eigenvalues of the matrix. Two, construct a matrix S whose columns are the normalized eigenvectors of the original matrix. Three, compute the inverse of matrix S denoted S inverse by arranging the eigenvectors as rows instead of columns. Four, the diagonal matrix D is then found by the transformation D equals SM S inverse. Sometimes the similarity transformation is written with an S inverse at the beginning, and sometimes like it is here, and sometimes it's written with the S inverse at the end like it is here. They both mean the same thing. It's just a matter of interpretation. Now let's do an example. Here's a matrix M, and this matrix is not diagonal. As you can see, there are numbers which are off of the diagonal. The task is to diagonalize matrix M. The first step is to determine the eigenvector. I used MATLAB. These are the three eigenvectors. They're already normalized. Next, you construct a transformation matrix S whose columns are the normalized eigenvectors of the original matrix. These are the eigenvectors of the original matrix. They're already normalized. The transformation matrix S has eigenvector one, eigenvector two, eigenvector three. Step three is to find the inverse of S. The inverse of S has eigenvector 1, has the eigenvectors along the rows, not the columns. The diagonal matrix D is found by this transformation, SM, S inverse. We know M, and so M diagonal is equal to S, M, S inverse, and this is the diagonal matrix M. To truly understand the concept and the overarching ideas of similarity transformations, let's dive into example 2. This example will help you visualize basis transformations clearly, if you follow along carefully. In this example, I take a rotation matrix Rx of theta, which rotates an object about the x-axis by some angle theta, and apply a similarity transformation to it. This means changing the basis in the problem and examining how the rotation matrix Rx of theta behaves after the basis transformation. In a right-handed coordinate system, rotating by 90 degrees counterclockwise around the z-axis, We'll switch the x and y coordinates such that y becomes x and x becomes negative y. You can see that in the diagram in the lower right. This is a 90 degree rotation of the bases about z. Now this is the x-axis, and this, which used to be the positive x-axis, is now the negative y-axis. This is a rank 2 tensor. It's a matrix operator in quantum mechanics, Rx of alpha. I want to transform this tensor 
from this coordinate system to a rotated coordinate system. The way that I do that is with the similarity transformation. I take S, tensor S inverse. This is the operation, and the calculation yields this matrix in the lower left. Notice that this new matrix, this new tensor operator, is the rotation matrix Ry of theta. A rotation about the y-axis by some angle negative alpha is identical to a rotation about the negative y-axis by some angle positive alpha. In the unprimed coordinate system, the astronaut would be rotating about the x-axis. It would be like this. So it would be Rx of alpha. In the prime coordinate system, the astronaut, the rotation of the astronaut is exactly the same, but you need to represent it in a different coordinate system, and so now the astronaut is rotating about the negative y-axis. It's the same exact rotation, it's just we're representing it in a different basis. And that concludes Lecture 1, Part A, B, and C. Please like, subscribe, and turn on bell notifications, and join me shortly for Lecture 2, exploring SUN comparison of unitary transformations in Hilbert space with orthogonal transformation in real space. And here's a preview of Lecture 2. Are you in need of a great physics tutor? Dr. Hudis can help. Whether you're preparing for a high school test, AP test, or college exam, let me help you ace it. Are you an eager high school student aiming to get ahead and prepare for college level physics? Or maybe you're a college student and you want to learn even more advanced physics. Dr. Hudis can help. Visit acephysics.org and schedule a lesson today.